The latest installment in the much-loved Legend of Zelda series has finally arrived for Wii. Does it take the series to new heights? Or does it stay firmly in its iron boots? Let's find out. I heard the stories about a leprechaun. Set before a creener of time, Skyward Sword takes place on the floating land of Skyloft, a setting where Zelda isn't a princess and Link is preparing for the wing ceremony. It's a fairly peaceful day until a strange whirlwind strikes the two of them, causing Zelda to be lost to the land below. Determined to reunite with his childhood friend, Link sets off on a quest to save her. However, things get more complex when he discovers he is the hero, chosen to save the world from darkness. The story does sound pretty generic, but the first hour of the game relieves these issues. Thanks to a tight script and cutscenes that convey great emotion, you can really care and despise many of these characters. The cast you meet along the way are equally interesting, such as the paranoid Kiwis and the logical Thai, and they help carry the narrative. The story does get a little formulaic towards the later parts, but it will keep you engaged, thanks to its wonderful cast of characters, the multitude of references to previous games, and a villain you just can't wait to see die. I HATE GARN! And just a quick spoiler, Groos does not become Ganondorf. In fact, I think he's more like a Razor Jin from Sonic and the Secret Rings. No, no, no. Finally, we get to the gameplay! Skyward Sword takes the traditional Zelda gameplay and shakes it up in the same way someone would clean their rug. While previous games had multiple dungeons linked together by a large overworld, this game has a small hub area, a vast sky and three massive locations found on the ground. It's a setup that feels fresh and familiar all at the same time. The floating land of Skyloft is your main hub, and it's a quaint, peaceful place where you can talk to the non-playable characters and upgrade your gear. Yes, Skyward Sword has a few light RPG elements which involves collecting materials and insects from the surface world to improve your shield, potions and other various items. This feature is in fact a welcome addition and it never feels intrusive to the flow of the game. Leaping off the edge of Skyloft, you can summon your Loftwing and explore the open sky. Exploration is similar to Ratchet and Clank at Kraken Time, in the way you can explore smaller islands to find treasure and engage in numerous minigames. The sky portions do feel rather empty with a few enemy encounters, though you learn to appreciate the calmness of the sky after overcoming a tricky dungeon. However, traveling to the world below is where the gameplay truly takes flight. With Motion Plus, Link can finally do one-to-one -one swordplay, and this opens up a ton of new gameplay concepts. Battling enemies is no longer about just tapping the B button, but involves moving your sword in the right direction to attack exposed enemy weak spots. It adds a whole new dimension to the series, and makes traditional controls feel primitive. Even using the shield is more engrossing, thanks to the ability to deflect enemy attacks. Link also has a couple of new and old items all of which are used to their full potential for some truly great puzzles. The beetle is by far the best, thanks to its ver... ver, ver versatility. versatility. But the other items are also a lot of fun. Another great thing is that all the items aren't just used for their specific dungeon. You'll be switching between the eight of them consistently throughout the adventure, which is a refreshing twist. The real star of the show, however, is the level design. Each world you explore, from Faron Woods to Elden Volcano and the Lanaru Desert, are now stuffed with a ton of tight gameplay challenges and puzzles, which are no longer reduced to just being in dungeons. In fact, just getting to a dungeon is half the fun, but when you get to them, you can expect some of the best dungeon design in series history. Each of the dungeons are a joy to venture through, thanks to varied enemy design, perfect pacing, and exceptional puzzles. In fact, majority of the puzzles are completely fresh in their undertaking and design. Of course, Zelda wouldn't be complete without epic boss fights. And thankfully, Skyward Sword delivers some brilliant, well-layered bosses. Well, all of them except the final boss, who is not only disappointing, but is probably the easiest in the entire game. That's why I say Wind Waker still has the best final boss ending. Go Ganondorf! Even when you're revisiting an old area, the game still finds ways to surprise you and keep things fresh and exciting. Just when you think Nintendo has ran out of ideas, they throw something new at you. 
making Skyward Sword's gameplay practically flawless. Except the final boss. I hey, wasn't... why don't you say something new for a change? You always say the You're same not one. in control of me! That's good. That's better. The sword play is, of course, Skyward Sword's main highlight. And while it fills off at first, it soon becomes second nature, and fighting enemies is always fun and never becomes a lesson in waggling. While it's mostly brilliant, there are times when Link can sometimes be a little unresponsive, particularly in stabbing. The motion controls don't end there, though. Every item in the game uses motion in some shape or form, and they all work well. Old items, such as the bombs, feel new thanks to the ability to roll them, and new gadgets such as the beetle or the whip are used in such obvious ways that they never feel gimmicky. Flying in your loft wing is as smooth as a spherical bottle. Despite some minor niggles, Skyward Sword is the best use of motion controls the Wii has ever seen. I like the sound. No, stop it. You always do that. Hey, say, I, like I, like the, I like the sound of my voice. The Zelda series has always been known for its rememberable music, and Skyward Sword is of no exception. The music is now fully orchestrated, and it shows, delivering new tunes that enhance the mood and will become stuck in your head for quite some time. The sound effects are of top quality, and the way they come out of your Wii Remote helps suck you into the action. While the series still lacks voice acting, it doesn't matter too much as the characters come to life more through their expressions than their voices. Besides, if Zelda had voice acting, it probably wouldn't sound too great. In fact, it would probably sound like this. Anyhow, later Zelda. Look for me during the race. I'll be the one pulling off all the dangerous moves. Hey Gross, wait up! Did you hear that guy? A fair race? Yeah, the chance of that happening are just about less than zero. Grover Coley, oh look what you've done, I'm saying it wrong. Hey, honest video. Yes. Remember when I was talking about how great art direction can overcome any technical limitation? No. Well, Skyward Sword is an example of that. The art style is a perfect blend of the darker tones of Twilight Princess and the cell shading of the Wind Waker, creating a world that feels entirely unique. The character designs for the main cast, the enemies, and the many bosses are all top notch. And the impressionist art inspired look works perfectly to mask any of the Wii's limitations. For example, it creates a fantastic draw distance by blurring the background, making it look like something you would see in a Cezanne painting. Skyward Sword is a fantastic looking game and proves that great art direction trumps all! Man, this game has got some long ass length. The main game itself would take a solid 30 hours plus to complete. But that's not including the additional side quests scattered throughout the game. On top of this, you've got Hero Mode, a harder version of the main game to complete, and even some extra features such as a boss rush mode. In total, the game has over 80 hours of gameplay on offer, meaning Skyward Sword will keep you busy for a long time to come. Overall, I don't like your face. Now get away from me. The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword is a true revolution of the series, reshaping the formula and amplifying everything we love about Zelda while removing the filler that got in the way of previous entries. It offers some of the best gameplay ever seen in gaming history, and it's rounded off with a great story, mostly sublime controls, splendid music, and a fantastic art style. Skyward Sword soars highly as not only one of the best Zelda games, but also one of the best games ever made.